That's right, but that's not, I don't think that was really a major important thing. Then he gives the name of Michelle's guardian angel, which I'm not going to repeat here. Um, and he says, um, describes something about who he is. And, and I'm trying to find the next thing he talks about Michelle's or um, karma. It says here, um, you are no longer living in spiritual loneliness. Excuse me, Michelle hasn't been living in spiritual loneliness since she was born. It's true. I have been always had someone there. Let me, Jesus, Mother Aznaf, all the Yahweh, yeah. Okay. Um, now, um, it goes on and he talks about, um, and to enjoy your current place of great luck to the fullest, your guardian angel has also has a very small thing. Simply believe that he exists. Well, excuse me, but we don't even know if that's his real name. And we don't even know if that's Michelle's principality guardian angel or throne guardian angel. It doesn't say. Okay. Um... Anybody can say that they're a guardian angel and, and uh, even if they're not. And then you say they believe it exists. For because we believe they exist, they do exist. Right, that's true. Okay. Um, now, I want to go through and read through more of this here. Um, in any event, you have already traveled part of the way to meet these conditions for the quick launch of your good fortune. You will have already complied, complied with the first condition, belief in his existence. I don't believe this guy is even the right one. I don't think so either. But anyway, let's go on. This case, this is the single most important condition meeting the other two. One should be no more than a formality. If you truly believe and deserve, to, you deserve to enjoy the good luck that awaits you in the future. Celestial good um, regions in vibratory form. Now. Here he is, as he's talking, certain talk, techno babble, vibratory form. Um, everything has a frequency, everything has a vibration, but if you are totally un or uneducated in this, you would have went, huh? <laughs> right, and all he's saying is, is, that, is that you deserve, everybody has it, even the dark side can have it, it's it's not anything you have to work for. It's just something that is there if for you to take it if you choose to. The dark side can also receive the great gifts of Mother and Father Yahweh if they choose to come home. That's why that's why Rebecca Marina Messenger is is opening up a second portal uh, to um, offer a the dark souls a get out of jail card, if you will. Um, and it's something that she has been instructed to do um, by the powers of Mother Asana Father Yahweh, so that they there can be a return of all the all the spirits to the heavenly house. That's a very important piece. Um, I want to go here and and then it says money in you. Why has Michelle ever asked for money in her messages? Of, well, a couple days ago. Okay, that's a couple days ago. Um, according to your protected guardian angel, um, your finances will be stable during the first part of the coming phase. Okay, what she said for Michelle was the 21st. Um, what seems favorable for your finances? This, Michelle, means that you do not have to dread unexpected expenses in the coming weeks, but neither should you expect to find new sources of income to benefit from any windfalls. Okay, in other words, Michelle, basically, you know that. Yeah, right. 
literally you pay the rent, pay the bills, pay all everything, don't sit, you don't have to worry about that. He's saying is don't expect a job, you gotta get one. All right, at least not right away. Anyway, um, during this financial quiet period, then, um, your angel recommends that you do nothing, rather think with conviction that your financial situation will soon fix itself despite its appearances. So I do anyway, because what Michelle does anyway. <laughs> okay, because Michelle's a business major, she studied business. Okay, so she knows money. Um, indeed, even though you are not currently have all the money that you want to take advantage of broadcasting um, positive thoughts regarding the coming arrival of a large sums. Well, first of all, Michelle. The I could I scratched your head when he, we heard the date, and it was actually a few days after Dory comes back from Boston. Yeah, it was a uh, pretty interesting. Um, so that way, let me just reread this again so you get this here. Indeed, even though you may not currently have all the money you want. Um, there's a difference between want and need, but I'll get to that in a second here. Um, the advantage to broadcasting positive thoughts regarding the coming and arrival of large sums is expected by your guardian angel that this will help attract this money so long awaited to you. Await it to oh, wait a minute, wait, await it. Michelle has never had large sums of money. Michelle only had money in one lifetime and that was quite a few back. It used to be Pretty well to do. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so we like Michelle ever had money of any significant wealth. Um, unfortunately, Michelle died fairly young, so she never got a chance to enjoy it. That's true. Um, all right. The, I mean, the whole thing is in some ways he's, he's, he's promoting people to get all psyched up and to... Um, get going to think that this is going to happen. It's true is that if you do seriously wish for it with your heart, it can come to be true. That is, in fact, even Walt Disney said the same thing. You know, you know when he, when he wrote the song, When You Wish Upon a Star, that's exactly what he was talking about. If you really, truly believe it's to be true, it's going to be true. But, um, we need to be sure that in the case of whoever this guardian angel is, that this astrologer, astrologer is pointing is, is he not really, I mean, is he really a good spirit or bad spirit? Because immediately, um, I want to talk about what that one's here. He says the money here, um, so far so cool, level over yourself, blah, 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 blah. And then he went ahead and... However, oh, I love this part. Do not confine yourself to this because I believe the extremely important that should also reveal to you the following. <laughs> See, so the way from the sugar coated to the not so sugar coated. Just now, as I was still laboring for you, a strange event occurred. I was focusing on uh, deeply in concerns when an odd premonition suddenly came over me. Well, first of all, how do you know what my concerns are? It's a good question. You never told him. I never told him. Isn't that funny? I never told him that I had concerns. So he's already doing the equivalent of astrology, a pull grasping at straws, and or what it was statistically the most common straws, and then he's trying to save those are the ones that affect me. The ones that affect me, where's the money? But it's not because of Right, but, okay, let me finish, okay. I hear a certain whisper come from deep within me, a spiritual whisper that went through me, mine that kept repeating a single name, yours. Um, this so happens to me, but rather a peculiar phenomenon, but every time that this tiny little voice from above starts calling out my spirituality. Okay, so this is a, a, one of the, the six ways of communication, so we'll get into that in a little bit. Um, I think we did talk about that. This guy is receiving through clear audience Michelle's name, but that doesn't really mean crap. It just basically means that he's getting this message. Um, but he says here that he's saying that um, 
when every time it happens, it usually means something important. Yes. Okay. So, in other words, it could be important. It could be important. Um. Okay. So, uh, so I immediately decided to find out when this is where it gets interesting. Uh, without hesitation, I went to the ebony chest where I store my most prized personal possessions and took out my great celestial turret and the very special instruments I use when plotting something out. I'm preferring a very special work for you, and what I discover concerning you exceeds all great things I could have sent for you. Get ready for a pleasant surprise. Here it comes. Here it comes. Well, this is the good part. This is the good part. Um, as I was calculating the incidents of the great planetary transits and observing the movements of the s stars for you, one unique fact caught my attention. Uranus suddenly changed its transit around your name, Sun, and in full ascending phase came to rest next to Jupiter in your birth sky. Okay, go on. Uh, considering the enormous stakes such a uh, evil represents for you, I decided to warn you most urgently and to perform before a crucial date of number tw November 21st of 2015. There we go with that date again. Um, what is that? What is it? It says here that is the day when everything will be decided for you. I know this, and I now have the proof. Okay, so again, he's saying November twenty-first, things will be decided for Michelle. Okay, but now here's the question: If okay, this date. Uh, we looked it up on the calendar. It's nothing really important. It's the date Dory comes home. Oh, she might come home before then. Yeah, it's just the day after the soup kitchen Thanksgiving. Okay, so it's it's definitely means something. Yes. Okay. Um. So. Um. All right. And so, because of the planetary movement is such magnitude and so noticeable, so here always means that something exceptional is happening in the sky, and what I just sensed was not long in coming. For the first minutes, for a few minutes, the celestial forces recklessly lowered the barriers. Of time for me. We talked about the, the fourth dimension. We were, so that's the fourth dimension. Right. That's the fourth dimension. Yeah. Um, for the... Okay. My powerful telepathy powers combined with the very old alchemical practices, a secret known only to me, allowed me to take me trouble of time. And so far beyond your past, your present, and your future, I discover what to me the history of your past lives, which was I was will not reveal to you is absolutely unique. No one could have revealed to you before me. There's an exclusivity, exclusivity before me. You think that's true? No, I don't think it's true because I think we already reveal all this by our own studies of the cash records. Right. Okay, so, um, then he says, there's something important I want you to tell you right away. This was not the first time that I was made to travel through time and to discover the mysterious and surprising secrets related to a person's past lives. And each time, these people, unimaginative revelations and unimagined revelations and certain unusual discoveries have contributed to the past sweeping changes in their lives the most calculating manner possible. Indeed, many astral, um, astonishing uh, details provide in incredible evidence regarding the possible influence of past lives on a person's current life, and most of all, um, regarding a person's um, progress of near and 
future. First of all, the screen is really tiny to read. Wish Michelle still had her phablet. At least the two of us. All right. On this topic, and as far as you are concerned, you are already expect an Australian machine surprise. Um, I'm not going to go through all these details, guys. It's just too many. Uh, but we're going to pick through the... First of all, the good old Technobabble. Your first revolution, you have a hyper-beneficial angelical karma that is ready to affect your life. First of all, let's pick it apart, okay? Remember when I told you that karma does not have a karmic savings and loan, okay? You cannot save karma. It's, it, it is, in essence, a part of who you are, okay? Because if you study um, karma, you know that there's a good and a bad side. You can be a good karma, high, good karma energies, and they say, according to Jewish, you'll see your light as a feather, and you will be spared the, the hounds of hell who will eat and devour you if your, if your karma is, is heavier than a feather. Um, this is... That's true, but that's, you know, also because of the nature. It has to balance itself. So you cannot store karma energy up and like in a piggy bank. Don't ever let anyone tell you you can't. No, you can't. But that's one of the reasons why we were pointing this out to you. It was just, what this one reading is, be very careful with these guys when they start doing this. Now, not only does he explain what that really means, he explains that there was a negative entity that is or did or is still involved in my life that is um, going through and exchange my good karma for bad karma. Again, there's no karmic savings and loans. There's no karmic savings and loans. That's impossible. The, um, the only way you could truly exchange good karma for bad karma is if you chose um, to change your ways and go become evil and, and bad. Then that's when you're going to get bad karma. That's not because some third entity is doing that. It's something you have done voluntarily, voluntarily to yourself. Um, another thing that this guy goes on to do, is he says is that he, he is a, he'll do a free ritual, which only he and his circle know, which will basically help to remove the bad karmic debt and also to restore the good karmic debt. Um... What do you think? Bullshit. Bullshit. Agreed. Bullshit, 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 bullshit. <laughs> First of all, and let's be honest here. Okay? Your karma is in is in your is in your uh your life chart. It's part of your gosh records. Everything that you do either adds up to good karma or bad karma. Okay? There's no way that a third entity can take a loan all over your good karma, and in collateral, I'll give you bad karma in return. Right. Exactly. Okay, but, however, there is nobody to say that. Very few people have any idea of exactly what we're talking about. Well, here's the, here's the part you need to know. Karma is yours, and yours alone. Everybody has karma. Okay, and karma's like your credit score. Okay, you're talking, this guy's talking about saying some kind of an identity thief goes ahead and buys a home on your credit score, defaults on the loan, doesn't pay his, his mortgage, and all of a sudden now you are got stuck with a negative credit score, and all the debt collectors are calling you on the phone, and demanding that you pay. Right. That is absolutely positively not possible. Right. But just like when you're dealing with your identity theft, you should still be wary of people like this reading because these guys are starting to get into areas which I and let me both agree, we cannot agree with. Because it's bullshit. This is bullshit. Bullshit. <laughs> bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. Okay. So, the point is, is if you're going to 
want to work with astrologers and astronomers and some guy comes up with this kind of stuff, then I would seriously immediately question the authenticity of this guy or gal because, let's be honest, if they know anything about the cost records, and even Edgar Casey explained how the Akasha records worked, okay? The sleeping prophet was well aware of how they worked, absolutely. In his, his writings, he goes through and gave a lot of very accurate information that goes on to confirm what he said. He sh showed over and over and over again that his prophecies are correct. That's right, that's where his, uh, his, his institute in Virginia there, the ARA uh, Association, uh, ARE Institute there, um, is continuing his work and research into not only his own notes, but also to um, sponsoring certain kind of archaeological programs to help to confirm or deny the existence of the things that he had prophesied in his, his trances. Um, but this guy, I don't know anything about him to really give you a heads up if he's really legitimate or not. The point I'm trying to say is, not, he says also, like I said, when he, when he says that they can do special service, and at first he says, I'll do it for free, but I'm going to give you a calculated um, donation amount. Excuse me? Why don't you call it what it is? It's not a donation. A donation is when a person feels worth giving it to you. Okay? Now, if you really are trying to tell me is for a price, I will do a ritual, then say it that way. Don't say, I will give you, I'll do the ritual for free for a pre-calculated donation. Absolutely not. That is stupid, that is dangerous, and that is just bad thinking. It's bad thinking because it's inaccurate. And if there's anything we all know in this day and age is there's enough bullshit in the world. Correct. Um, now, because the sun is getting ready to come peek its way in here, and it's going to script the lighting again, unfortunately. So we're going to get ready to wrap this up. Okay, so can we want to give us a quick summary? Sure. If you ever get in contact with an astrologer, and the astrologer, if he's an ethical one, you know he's going to make a living. That's what they're doing it for, okay? And from the very beginning, he'll tell you the price. You ask him. And if he doesn't give you the price up front, or if he sounds kind of wishy-washy, walk away, okay? Because he's not being honest. He's going to try to sting you along. If he says that he needs to do a special ritual for you, for whatever reason, and like he said to Michelle, he's making a calculated donation amount, that's not a donation. That is the price of the ritual. And he should tell you that price up front, not in hiding it in little email messages somewhere, somewhere down deep. Exactly. Next thing he says is that for he'll give Michelle a free gift of a pentacle or whatever. First of all, pentacles are not free, and that costs money to make. Okay, they're cast in you know usually out of uh, metal, usually out of um, like seeing this metal, this kind of stuff, kind of a pewter type of metal, or um, maybe something a little bit more substantial. But they're not free. Okay. So he's probably got, a, he probably bought a whole caseload of um, pentacles and he's probably blessed them all, that's true. But then again, he can't really say that they're special to him because the only thing special to him is that, is that he puts his spiritual Elric energy onto them and then he's telling them to you for the price of the ritual that he's supposed to do to help clear you of negative karmic um, debt. That's where I'm telling you right now. Watch out with these guys. Great. So obviously Michelle and I decided not to respond to him because we realized that this guy was not being honest, was not being factual, and he even had the nerve to suggest 
something to Michelle, which we both have kind of wondered too, which is he said that Michelle may have a second or third soul in her body, which is causing great evil. Yeah, we think the same thing too. We think there may be a, a, a third entity uh, that is right now is very much corralled, and he can't do anything negative, or she can't do anything negative. Um, but it's causing that person to feel a lot of anger. We've been trying to get rid of that person by offering them a way to get out. We've been doing our best we can to find uh, a way to allow the person to go home. Um, no strings attached. And I think we have done pretty good. I think we have possibly gotten, um, allowed her to leave. It's hard to say. It's hard to say. But just remember this. There's a lot of current artists out there. And if you happen to be running into the wrong guy or the wrong girl and they start demanding your blood out of you and or trying to say that you got to pay this much or that much for a ceremony, and it's a pre-calculated donation that's not being factually honest. There's nothing wrong if an astrologer says they'll give you a free reading. That's, that's absolutely true. There's nothing wrong with that. But obviously for them, they're going to make money in that case out of something else. Right. But if the problem is, is that if the information that they are presenting to you in your reading does not match what you know of your own Akasha records, then they're not giving you the, the right reading. They did. He did not ask, for example, Michelle's last name. Okay, he did not ask where she was born. He did ask what Michelle's favorite color was. Yes, that was it, though. That was it. Which means, how many Michelles are there in the world? Loads. How many were born on the same date? Loads. How many of them like the same color? Loads. In other words, they might be getting the wrong reading for the wrong Michelle. Right, exactly correct. And also, don't forget, some of this reading looked like it was pre was it was a form letter. It was typed up in advance, and it just adds the name of your guardian angel and of course your name to it. Um. We can do things like that too, but we prefer rather to work on the personal level and we don't charge for our workings and we do workings because we feel it has to be done. If there's a working that needs to be done, we're not going to charge you anything for it, but we will do it because we know that Mother and Father God have given us the ability to do great things to help people because of Michelle and my special meaning on earth. And by the way, Michelle, how does it feel to have cold weather today? Um, it's colder. That's nice. It's it's nice. My skin feels good because I love I love the cold air in my skin. Yeah, and um, it's making the studio a lot more tolerable today. Absolutely. Um, I don't know when we're gonna get snow, guys. I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna. I know I have access to all four seasons now, but of course, um, I'm gonna have to get ready to, to ramp up the workings for. Because you see, Michelle now is, the North, is not only the North American Snow Queen. She's doing all four seasons this, uh, this year for Mother Asna. Yes, uh, the four seasons are going to be uh, uh, until she feels that she can find a replacement that she feels comfortable with. So I'm, I'm in charge of autumn as well as winter and spring and summer. So yeah, I have the ability to really uh, manipulate all four seasons. I have chosen not to manipulate autumn because of the fact is that um autumn is really not my season but i think because you didn't manipulate autumn at all i think you put autumn in a holding pattern really yeah i think that's why we haven't had any snow lately or anything it's because you have not basically done the equivalent of nudged autumn into the operate mode or execute mode so you need to um, push along. Okay, I'll do that. Okay. Um, also, of course, I'm going to try to get more videos in as well. And we are, of course, trying to make sure that you are given the right information from the day one about what is going on out there in the world. And uh, I, we just want to make sure that you be aware of some of the tricks and traps 
con artists, behold behaviors out there. Uh, as far as this astrologer who did this, I really personally hope that you are very careful because um, if you are deliberately trying to mislead, um, the rules of karma are going to kick in and kick you, knock you down over blindsided because um, evil, um, I don't think he's necessarily evil, but I think that maybe he may have been a, a little bit un um, unattuned to certain things about karma. Now, karma is, as I said, is something that we all carry. It is There is no karmic savings and loans, so you cannot borrow against karma, okay? But rather, it's your, your heart, your spiritual heart that's going to tell you. It's just like the song by, it's just like the song by, um, uh, what is it? Your Cheating Heart? Yeah, that's by, um, one of the singers was Patsy Klein. And... I ain't going to even seen you. Right. Well, your cheating heart will tell on you. Basically means just like it sounds like. So if you're trying to um, play games with people, you're going to eventually kind of out yourself. And um, you're going to feel it. Yep. Sure you will. All right, guys. Listen, we're going to let you go. And again, Michelle and I would like to remind you to please do not forget to like or dislike Share with your friends, your family, enemies, whatever. And please do subscribe. And you want to see one more thing? Yes. To, um, to the guy on my video channel, that there's a couple of guys that find me physically attractive. They're doing a good with the wolf whistles. Um, I appreciate your dedication, but I think that you guys have got to keep in mind that we are educators, we are teachers, and we're trying to share our knowledge. And there's not... There's no sexual desire here uh, to share our sexual lives with you or anyone um, in that circle in that way. We want to just help you to avoid um, the problems in your life and to, and to grow and spiritually mature. That's all we want to do. Um, I'm not interested in a relationship with uh, anyone right now. I already have a relationship. I have a relationship with Lumi and I have a relationship with Dory. Uh, so we're not interested in going for another one. Bring on, sister. All right. That's it for now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everybody. Hey, did you know there's a lot more going on right now at our websites? Are you watching all four of them? If not, check them out. There's a list right here. We got three YouTube channels and one audio-only channel for your enjoyment. So come on and dig in and see all the stuff we do here at the North American Snow Queen Palace.